Brought to you by WKTV, I'm Wayne Thomas. Welcome to another Grand Rapids Ghost Hunters Paranormal Podcast. Hey, I'm Brian Jose from Kent County Paranormal. Thank you for joining our forum in search of paranormal possibilities. I'm Kim Colleen. Keep, please keep an open mind about things you might not easily believe as we explore the mysterious, right? The mysterious. <laughs> That's what this show is all about. We search out the mysterious. I think we we uh, found a good one this, this yeah, week. Yeah, we did. We've been anticipating this show, mm-hmm. right? We'd like to start out with thanking people. And at the controls tonight is Maddie. So we appreciate her help. I also would like to thank people here at WKTV. Mm-hmm. Kelly that runs the show. There's Tom. There's Nate. There's Joanne. And also Matt Zuby, who worked with us before. Mm-hmm. We were all honored last Saturday. They had a dinner for people who volunteer their services. That's how this station runs, by volunteers. So our 19 shows were recognized and honored. I got me this cool T-shirt. And as long as we're thanking people, I'd like to thank our featured guest, Phil Shaw, who drove all the way across the state of Michigan to be here with us. (laughs) We filled the studio with hairy bipeds. As many as we could find, but Sasquatch is a very elusive creature. True, true very true. So, with uh, no further ado, Phil Shaw. Welcome. How you doing? Nice yep, to be welcome. here. I always love to talk about Bigfoot, so I'm good. <laughs> All right. Maybe you could start with your first incident yeah. that you had. Okay. Um, or how long you've been researching Well, Bigfoot. actually, in... in uh, Spring of 2006, my wife and I were uh, going east, the maritime provinces, and we were going through New Brunswick, and there was an opening in the trees. We're on a four-lane highway, and there was somebody walking between the blocks of trees. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see a hat, a white face. We didn't see the normal Canadian plaid shirt or blue jeans, and we both agreed we'd seen Bigfoot. Oh, my God. And... We went home and told our three sons that we'd seen a Bigfoot. (laughs) And they said, you must have seen a Bigfoot because you never agree on anything else. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) So it had to be true, right? It had to be true. (laughs) Oh, brother. (laughs) But then then, uh, that fall, there was an ad in the Detroit Free Press. They were going to have an expedition in UP by Marquette. And I took two sons and uh, a brother up there, and we... Did the thing. It was fun. Yeah. Didn't know it, but my sons did a mockumentary called the Shaw Bigfoot Project. And it's funny. It's, you know, it's a mockumentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's, I started studying Bigfoot then, and, and then a year or so later started collecting stories. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> that video <laughs> was a good end. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep it light. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> yep. So I end up doing um, conferences and, and pro- you know programs and and okay. people people tell me their stories. I'm up to 120 incidents just around West Branch. Now where's West Branch? I'm not <laughs> West familiar. Branch is yeah, about there. The, okay, <laughs> about yeah, there. Then, you always that the helps. helpful uh, Michigan. Uh, <laughs> that, <point> now. <laughs> well, that <laughs> helps. Yeah. We're about 50 it. miles north of uh, yeah. Bay City, Saginaw, right up I-75. Okay. Does yeah. that seem to be like a hot spot for I don't Sasquatch th- I don't sightings? think it's hot spot. You know, it's a combination. you got to have the habitat, and I think much of, particularly lower Michigan and the UP, is great habitat. Right. It could be as good as anything in the world, but you also got to have people seeing them yep. and reporting them. And if you don't, you know, people don't have a place to go. Right. If they're not aware of a place, you know, I, I actually was with the BFRO temporarily, but uh, you got to have somebody listening. And BFRO, that's what, and BFRO Bigfoot, Bigfoot Research, Research Organization. Organization. Okay, I could I could have guessed that. Probably but it was started I, yeah, just in for 19- our listeners. They yeah, have started to know. in 1995 by, by Matt Moneymaker, who put on the show. Or started the Finding Bigfoot series, you know, about eight or nine years. They did. Yeah, that's yeah. on, uh, yeah. what, is that on, no. It was on uh, Animal Planet, uh, yeah, for, Animal but it's Planet. done now. It's done okay. now. But, but we had uh, Cliff Brackman to our conferences twice. Cool. So it's been fun. I want to spend more time on the habitat 
because yeah. Michigan, this podcast goes all over the world and people don't realize Michigan. Right. We're really almost like two states, the upper peninsula and right. the lower peninsula are like night and day. Right. Well, upper, lower, all over Michigan, we got lakes, we got swamps, we got forests. Yeah, I want to go right. over that. We all have over. three national forests. Right. We have six state forests. We yeah. have the largest state forest system in the nation. Sure. We have 19 plus million acres in forests. Right. It's considered timberland. 53% of Michigan is forest. And we're never more than six miles from water between the rivers, the streams, the inland lakes, and the four great lakes that surround us. So sure. when you talk about prime real estate right. for Sasquatch, sure. this is it. The dense forests, the swamps, the vast farmlands, plenty of fresh water. Minnesota brags about their 10,000 lakes. We got 11,000 lakes. Oh, do we? <laughs> I didn't even know that. And, and we, we have the longest coastline next to Alaska. Because we're next to four of the Great Great Lakes. Sure. So we just got swamp, and I think they're swamp creatures. Based, based on your research, do you feel like there's more sightings in the UP versus the lower peninsula? You know, like, what's I, the percentage of sightings up or lower? Again, you got less people up there. True. And the more remote it is, the harder it is for people to see them because they're not there. True. In fact, last summer, my wife and I flew into... <clears throat> Northern California, rented a car, and went up along the Oregon coast. So we saw the mountains. And then in the fall, we went to North Carolina. You know, mountains are beautiful, yeah. but they are inaccessible. Yeah. You know, Something could be it's up hard, there and nobody It's hard would ever to get know. up there, and yeah. you get up there, you could fall off real easy. Right. Swamps aren't so bad. No, I don't know. Swamps are, can be <laughs> yeah, bad. You, you can get my, the problem is most people don't want to get their feet wet. Yeah. True. You don't go, you know, if you have, if you got more than six inches of water, most people, hey, I'm going to get my feet wet. I'm getting out of here. Unless yeah. you're going into a swamp because you don't want to get covered in leeches. Go yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that then go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not very hospitable. Thick, yeah. thick stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Phil, have you ever got lost in the woods? I uh, never really. I've always been good with a compass, but I got a handheld GPS, and that's just amazing. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's those, cheating. Those, uh, yeah. those are amazing, <laughs> you know. I can be out. Half a mile, mile from truck. Mm -hmm. Plug that thing, you know, my truck's that way. Wow. And then I use a compass. To shoot. Most of us don't use the batteries, but they're amazing. Yeah. You you also hunt, like, small game. We talked about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I went to my brother's. Yes, I took my grandson and, you know, farmland that hasn't been farmed for 30 years, the brambles. I won't go there again. It's too thick. You yeah. can't walk wow. through it. The brambles, right. well, I got a scratch on my hand. Oh, yeah. Just, they stick know, to your clothes. They, and... oh, stick to your clothes. They stab you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and yeah. they rip you. They're bad. You, you know, you, you, you need a dog, which we didn't have, but you can't physically walk through. So these bramble patches grown up so bad. Sure. It's not too bad for deer hunting. He's got a big blind and stuff, but it's just not hospitable for... I mean, the rabbits are probably there, although I do believe Michigan is, like a lot of areas, got a lot of coyotes today, and coyotes yep. and bobcats yep. eat yeah. all the small game. Exactly. Yeah. We don't have snow right now in Michigan because we've had a lot of warm weather, Yeah. so it's not you, as easy to track. You them. should see our yard. We, we live on the north side of a terminal moraine. My grandkids up over the weekend, the snow banks are uh, seven, eight feet. Oh, wow. But we're on the north side of a moraine. So the sun don't get to it. And okay. we also got 75 foot pine trees. So, you know, the sun just don't get it. Yeah. But just going into West Branch, the farm fields are all clear. Sure. Sure. But, uh, now, I think it probably depends on what reference you, you're you reading. But I found that Michigan, they had it as fourth for the most sightings in the nation. Is that what your research or you I, found? I don't, I don't know. Uh, let's see. You got Washington, Washington State, number Oregon, one. California. Uh, Ohio's big, you know, but if you take uh, the the eastern 100 miles and the southern 100 miles of Ohio, that's part of Appalachia. Yeah, it's I think rough, Pennsylvania might have been on Pennsylvania, that top up it's there, It's rougher too. country than anything in Michigan. Maybe the porcupine should be approach it, but, uh, you know, but you got a lot of people. Ohio's got a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You know, Columbus, Cleveland, Toledo, all that stuff is, there's just a lot of people, and it's fairly accessible. Sure. We don't have the Rocky Mountains in this region, but there is some mountain range up through New York State also. Yep. Yeah. Um, Anna Condrack or um, Anna yeah. Condrack. Yeah. Yep. Anna Randex. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I knew it was something like yeah. that. Some... 
Yeah. So, yeah, and there's been, uh, they do little conventions and stuff where they have the oh. contest for the hollering. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? The, yeah. Actually, that'd be pretty interesting, I think. Yeah. Tomorrow, I have some more on tape if you want to hear some more what, of those. What, where did you get that? Well, this, that, the one that I played in the poem in our reference, yeah. that was from Bobo. Oh, yeah. Bobo is one of the big, sh- Bobo Fays is. Yeah, he's one, he's worked a lot with uh, Cliff Brackman. Cliff is more scholastic. And Bobo is more of a coffee shop guy, but he's he's funny. I've heard him. I've been to the Ohio Bigfoot Conference three times, four times maybe, and that's probably the biggest Bigfoot conference in the world. Okay, and that's uh, you know directly um, east of Columbus, about an hour and a half. That of people when they go to these conferences, do they do they bring evidence like hair samples? Yeah, you know, do, not so I mean, much. do people actually there's find of, this kind of stuff? There's or a lot of vendors or... selling footprints and stuff, but uh, you know, a, a lot of them have had experiences. Yep. and a lot of them are just think it's fun to look and listen. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Like our conference, we got some really good speakers coming. I in, see that. In April. Yep. So, what are the statistics of your typical Sasquatch? If I was going to go up north. Family and I are going to go to Traverse City, let's say. We're going to do some hiking in the woods. What am I looking for? Am, can I actually look in the woods and be like, okay, this tree has certain rub marks, or I'm looking for, you know, are there signs? The evidence. Is there actually, evidence that could be left behind that yeah. I could look around and say, okay, I'm on the trail of one, or there's one nearby, or... What am first I looking of all, for? First of all, the odds of finding evidence of Bigfoot is very small. Right. They they do leave. I've only found about a dozen structures in 12 years, which would be trees stacked, you know, that probably aren't kids making a teepee or a hunter blind. They don't make them that office, often. People ask me why they make them, and I say, I haven't talked to one lately. I'll, when I do, I'll tell you. But uh, Are you talking in like... Like sticks that yeah, are up like they, in a they, teepee position. Yeah, yep, and you yep. feel like those are the homes. Like, no. Oh. My thinking is those are strictly a signpost for them. I think they're just saying we're here. Okay. And you dummies don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think they're. They don't need a shelter. They got hair four inches long, four or five inches long. Right. They're. Um, the only time of year they even need shelter is the winter time. Right. And I'm to the conclusion that they go underground. Yeah, there's plenty of caves. Oh, wow. yeah. I mean, there's I never, caves. Or, 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 or dig holes in the wall in under the water, you know. I read a book from Europe, the, the European wild man, and whoever wrote that book thought that they actually go into the big rivers and go on undercuts, hmm. dig, dig holes, which the Grand River, Muskegon River, I get Osaba River, I get a lot of reports along the rivers. But to go out and actually look and see a Bigfoot, the odds are so small. Right. It's like a little bit like hitting a lottery. Oh, sure. Yeah, because I'm convinced that 99% of your sightings are accidental. They have bad ears just like we do. <laughs> and it, it, The know, Bigfoots have bad ears? They don't have any better ears than we do. They're, okay. almost, they're almost human. <laughs> sure, and if sure. You're, if you're in the woods and you've got a lot of wind blowing, you can't hear. Yeah. And if you're so they pre- can't hear us, we if, can't yeah. hear them, and, and for, you could and just you, and step a, upon if one. If a human is walking and being quiet, and you accidentally find one preoccupied, yeah, you know, yeah. digging a root. Doing something. Yeah. Then you might, might smell it before you see that's it. That's a possibility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if that, down, that was in the poem, too. If you're, you know, if you're downwind. If you're downwind. Yeah, okay. But they got to be downwind. You know, if, if they're upwind. Well, they if might the smell going, you before you smell them. I think they oh, got maybe. bad noses, too. Oh, really? Oh, I don't think they got any better noses than we do. <laughs> okay. The reason I say that is I think they are so close to human. Sure. They have, you know, okay hearing, but they, they're they not like a uh, a dog that's got an ears like this. Yeah. They don't have a dog nose. They, they don't smell that. I mean... They're very similar to human. Yeah. Well, I want to read this list of evidence that people present. Well, you've yeah, already yeah. refuted some of this stuff, so that's good. The nest of twisted woven branches, you kind of refuted that. But um, also the musty, moldy smell, thousands of photos, footprints, castings, handprints, hand castings, body impressions, scat, hair, and then what about DNA? 
Has there been any DNA? Oh, evidence? good question. There's a group uh, in uh, Texas. Uh, they they call them uh, uh, um, Ketchum uh, Genome Project. About it's between five and ten years ago, there was a group of them. They collected 111 samples of hair and blood, and that's where they somebody had seen a Bigfoot leaning the belly of a tree or walking over a fence. And they sent that 111 samples to about 10 or 12 labs that could do DNA testing. The uh, not surprising, about a third of the samples come back um, squirrel, raccoon. Mm. But the other two thirds came back. The female genome was 100% human. The male gene genome come back unknown primate. My conclusion okay. of this. And what I tell everybody is everybody knows women are smarter than men, and most women think their husbands are unknown primates. So, <laughs> so basically, you got hairy men out there, very smart, hairy men. That are called Sasquatches. That are called Sasquatches. <laughs> They're bigger. In fact, I connect it to the Bible even. You know, some people, you know, the Esau and the Edomites, spitting image of Bigfoot. He was all hair, and... Uh, then he married into the Edomites, who probably were cannibals and giants. And the, and the Bigfoots are giant. Right. Yeah, Yeah, because um, my, my, my daughter, when she was younger, was into Bigfoot research. Yeah. You know, she's sure. 14 now, but when she was like eight or nine years old, yeah. she absolutely Loved was it, huh? gaga about Bigfoot. Right, right. So we had got this Bigfoot research kit on a yeah. vacation trip yeah. one time. So this just, I don't know if you can see this, but this goes to show you, this says deer, um, black bear, gorilla, human, adolescent Bigfoot, adult female, and adult male. So this gives you an idea, and this would be on the small side. Yeah, right. It's showing 16 inches. Yeah, it? it's yeah. showing and, 16. And I think, I think the male Bigfoot is probably average more like 18 yeah, so and, uh, this, I mean, if you can the, see where the toes are way up here and so forth. But the females. This is, this females is on the small, small side. Sure. So just to give you a reference point. But they have juveniles that will have smaller feet, human-sized feet, mm -hmm. babies. Right. Yeah, they're just humans with uh, growing up. But there's been family units being seen. My research says eight, up 800 pounds, 8 feet, but maybe up to 1,000 pounds. For Bigfoot, it really depends on whether you believe the uh, the theory that the Gigantopithecus that came from China came over the land bridge, uh, you know, Alaska. They think that that happened supposedly along with the uh, American Indians, maybe. And the Gigantopithecus, from what I read, they figure was between ten and fifteen foot tall, and and weighed between a thousand and fifteen hundred pounds. And when you find footprints that are 22 to 24 inches, yeah. they are a big animal. <laughs> right. I would bet they're bigger than, than eight foot. As long as they're on feet. Yeah. The big foot has a joint in the bottom of right. its foot. Right. Not unlike people. Right. So it walks different because it has it's jointed in the middle of its foot here. Much like apes. Apes have a joint in the middle right. of the foot. Let's talk about the, some of the other hairy uh, bipeds we have here and why that can't be confused because you had the prints on here of bear and stuff yeah and this in the different sizes why they can't be confused the black bear only weighs up to 400 pounds about five feet the biggest the biggest ever was a russian bear 1100 pounds but that's that's not average a gorilla 350 pounds we have a gorilla somewhere all right here is a gorilla <laughs> i guess and then uh, kind of sort of the like grizzlies that. now can be 600 they can be six and a half feet the biggest 1600 and the polar bear is right up there with the grizzly mm -hmm. 990 pounds nine feet so i think there's uh, there's characteristics if you compare bears and bigfoot they're so dramatic a big bigfoot will have shoulders this wide Bears don't have shoulders. Yeah. Uh, a bear has a nose this big. Yeah. Uh, Bigfoot has no nose. They have a nose like you and I do. Right, 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 right. Uh, they don't have a tail like this. They don't have right? a tail. They don't have any tail at all. No. Right. The, um, <laughs> the nose, the ears. Most bears have upright ears. Right. Uh, Bigfoot 
you can, most time you can't see the ears. The hairs, too right hairy. Over, like like your hair, your hairs covered. And your they ears. would have a yeah. big beard hanging down. Maybe males and females. I would imagine. Would I have don't both know. Beards. I don't. I've never heard that females do. I have heard some males will have a beard. The big yeah. beards. Yeah. But I think it's the the uh, the uh, and the fact that a, a Bigfoot is a very big animal. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's three, four times bigger than your average bear, and mostly bears run on all fours. The interesting fact, though, is that people don't realize that Bigfoot often run on all fours, like like apes. They do. Yeah. Okay, because you know, Cause see, they got the big shoulders. The big, they got the arms, the hands that meet, reach the knees, and they can go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive <laughs> in a quick. My one of my favorite books was uh, written by. It's called the, the Historical Bigfoot, written by a, a, a Chad Armet out of Ohio. He collected stories from the 1800s when this country was being settled by the Europeans, and in newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. And in 50 percent of the cases, the uh, what the wild man that the people were seeing was both bipedal and quadruped. Okay. And they can go from one to the other. And when you think about it, you know, you go from eight to ten foot tall to four foot. So your profile is hugely different. A lot of the swamp grass, the ferns is about are, that are tall. Five, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You can hide so well if totally. you're four foot tall, but if you're ten foot tall, right. it's and a little you're harder. Blend, and you're gonna blend in a lot more too, because if you're going like that, you're more likely to if you're just getting a glancing brush, you're gonna think it's a bear. Yeah, yeah or something totally. Than a yeah, foot, yeah. You know? I think I think there's many cases yeah. where people think they're seeing a bear and they're actually seeing mm -hmm. a bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Now you, you don't said they get a lot of casts too of like knuckle prints and stuff like that. Knuckle prints. Funny. They're they're yeah. going on the knuckles. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You said the term wild man in the Ojibwa. I believe yeah. that's what it translates. Well, the, it's the, the it, Indian it, tribe from Grand Rapids, also oh, called Chippewas. Yeah. I believe it's uh, wild man. Sure. They're, there's a lot of different names that you oh, had in your reports. That's just looking at my chart here, the yeah. worldwide Bigfoot history. Every indigenous uh, tribe around the world has a different name. They all had different languages. Let's go over some of these names, because Ohio has the Ohio grass man. Florida right. has the skunk ape. Right. The, there's the Himalayan yeti. Right. Or the. That's he's behind you, I think. Abdominal right? snowman. Right. The yeti. <laughs> then the Chinese wild man. Here. This thing is uh, yeah. but, uh... <laughs> the Chinese wild man right here, <laughs> and then the Aztecs had a, a name for uh, Sasquatch also. Oh, right. I, I, this is all from your uh, research that I've read oh, oh. from your stuff online. Oh, the oh. Nunumic, <laughs> and then there, there is the Kentucky uh, Barilla. Wayne, I think turn your wild thing off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a uh, the bearilla is actually, I think, more of a dogman type creature Possible. from the descriptions. Yeah. And what do you? Yeah. What, long, as long as we hit on that, what do you think of dogman reports? You know, I people see them. Uh, Houghton Lake, a, a lady I talked to thought she saw maybe a, a dogman. Mm -hmm. You know, if I believe in Bigfoot, I. Guess it doesn't take too much more. Right. I believe in other There's things. There's a lot of reports. And other things, yeah. I'm inclined to think that the Bigfoot is closely related to human and uh, is more likely to happen where to transfer from a dog to a biped gets a little sketchy to me. So I don't, I even attempt to collect stories for dog man. I, I'm most, almost entirely Bigfoot. Right. I've but, heard Bigfoot described as shy. But yet curious. Yeah. Looking through people's windows. Sure. They see them. Sure. So I mean, yeah. it's it's a curious creature. They really are. They're. I think a lot of animals are curious, and uh, Bigfoot is. They they like they watch TV with you if you let them. You think they like music? <laughs> would, uh, Love music. I just finished a book called Bigfoot. It's by a, a doctor of psychology from Oregon. Uh, Dr. Matthew Johnson and his research technique is actually setting in the wild yeah. without lights um, play music and that's it, supposed to it, either, attract either li either live or mp3 yep um, and they just love music I don't think they like rock music but yeah I was, <laughs> I, I was gonna say rock music. it needs to be smooth right uh, flute you know particularly flute Indian type of music 
Uh, no, he seems to think that's the best way to draw them in. Lights actually, fireplace or uh, fire, it really ruins a human's night vision, but you're less likely to see the Bigfoot too, okay. because it ruins your eyesight when you got a fire. So you should light. just really just be sitting in the dark. Sitting in the dark and talking, laughing, play music. You know, just just sit there and be brave. Because <laughs> you'll hear a yeah. lot of things out there that yeah. your mind's going to play tricks on you and be like, that's a big foot. He actually <laughs> sleeps under the yeah. stars with no tent, which I got to try. I've never done it, but it really intrigues me. You know, yeah. you know they put a lot, a lot of mosquito dope and a, yeah, no <laughs> you know, right. and a head net. But, you know, what a, you know, a tent gets in your way. You can't see them. Right. You know? and, uh, I wonder what you've heard out there in the woods. You t have vocalizations on your list there. Yeah. yeah I played the one from yeah. Bobo. What have you heard when you Actually, the, the best I've heard was in Kentucky. Uh, two, I think it was two years ago. I was down there to that expedition I'm going to in April. And I think I got about seven minutes of what I call it was a mad ape. He was mad, and uh, there was a couple of us by the campfire, and, and their group came up with several groups, and we were in the valley, and I think we were in his way, and uh, I found it really funny. The guy says, oh, let's go, let's go and chase him. I said, oh, that's okay, you got, go ahead, I'm going to uh, watch the fire. Yeah, <laughs> you go chase him. But it was big. I mean, yeah. that was like having a gorilla growling at you, and they could hold the breath for two minutes. And do you think in your brain, like, what else could this pass? I mean, well, the, the skeptic in me. I actually, you know, like, I'm so far past that point. What else could make? Point. I'm so past. I know they exist. The big question in my mind is, what are they? Right. Are they simply a Bigfoot human cross? Are they paranormal or are they alien? That's the question. Are they the and missing there's link? So many, there's so many things, too, because a lot of locations, like, They'll have UFO reports, or Bingo. you have I got ghost reports where got there's several. a lot of crossing of different. I've, I've seen fields. a, I've seen a, uh, an orb, one time. Three of us saw it, right where Bigfoot. We got a lot of activity, you know. It's this big, and then turned off like a light. Now that's not swamp dance. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it was over a lake. With your visible eyes. Huh? With your visible eyes. We can see it very clearly. Okay. I could have took a picture, but I thought yeah. it was I, uh, it was a place that we've had a lot of Bigfoot activity. It was behind a barn. I went over to join the guys, and there I had time to take a picture. Okay. But uh, they had been watching it for a minute, and then it just turned out. What color was it? Yeah, it was just like a real light, bright white. And they said one, a small one, come up in the grass by them. So you know. For me to discount paranormal, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but, right. But, but and that, you couldn't debunk it, it at the time. Well, no, no way. There's, there was no deck. I thought it was the guys on a deck. Well, it's a real shallow lake. There's no deck. <laughs> it was out. Yeah. What other light line. source could it be coming nothing, from? Nothing. Nothing. Couldn't have been. You know, then to be there and then disappear. You know. There seems to be a correlation. Oh. You yeah. see UFOs and then yeah. you get the sightings. I've got. Uh, not very many, two or three, where there was UFOs seen close by. I think yeah. I know what planet they come from. What planet is that? It's where the Wookiees come from. <laughs> it's Kashak, it's called, I think. Isn't it, Brandon? I'm from not Star, a, I'm Star not Wars? A Star You're Wars not a Star Wars person, guy? No. Well, isn't that Chewie? Isn't he a big He's supposed a big to, He foot? was based on a Sasquatch, I believe. Oh, I see. He that. looks like it. Yeah. Chewbacca? Yeah, yeah Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Yeah. He looks like he should be yeah. a Bigfoot. So that's where they come. That's what Could planet be. they come from. Um, I personally, I think they might be some kind of missing link between, because where is the missing link? They never discovered one. It's missing. They don't have fossils of it. No. Well, you raise a good question. You know, the biggest thing a lot of people will say is uh, I, they've never found a body, so they can't exist. And I think well, my whole thing is like, as people, we bury our dead, so why won't they bury their dead? That's you a know? possibility. Like, that's but, a good question. But one of the first things, if you read or heard about John Green, he was one of the first researchers from British Columbia. I visited him uh, five years ago, and he's passed away. He wrote the book, Apes Among Us. He said it's a no-brainer. They're cannibals. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <gasps> They're cannibals. I'm thinking they eat everything. They're cannibals. The bones and everything. Well, well, even that, even if they die in the woods, too, like if you're way out in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't take long, even if it's true. not them eating it. for the Like, like if you, like I've seen like ones like on Michigan Outdoors, where they have a time-lapse camera, yeah. they have a deer out, and the yeah. dead deer out, and that yeah. thing's gone well, fast. Then, <laughs> then you put yeah. that together yeah. with... 
a study of the yowie i read a book about the yowie in australia and they claim that the yowie has jaws strong enough to bite the bones right off and then i put that together with a fella from higgins lake who said he found very large bm it had a deer hoof in it gross think about that for a minute a deer hoof in it right I mean, like intact. Intact. He should have saved it. He should have bagged it and tagged it. He yep. didn't. And DNA'd it. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. He should have. He's had uh, numerous. So he, he claims he had one running with a wolf up there. So there, there, no small mammal is going to be going to ingest. A whole hoof. No. Absolutely. Like that's got to be a big So something. you take all those factors together. Very smart. Uh, the American Indian said they were cannibals. Every tribe, if you read the book by Kathy Strain, who uh, was an anthropologist from, I think she's from Washington State. She wrote the book, uh, uh, I always forget it, it's Monsters, Cannibals, and Other Beings, or something like that. Okay. But she interviewed 57 different American Indian tribes, and they all said that they were cannibals. Hmm. My, my research says they're omnivorous. Like human beings, they eat fruit, berries, roots, fish, poultry, deer. They prefer elk, uh, roadkill, and they drag women and children off and eat them. Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> What's that true? Nice. Oh, well, if well, you look in the Nada National Parks, that's where people go missing. At, so. Oh, really? You, you met, you met uh, David Polites, Missing 411? I, I haven't read it, but I know oh, there's a lot of people oh, that go missing in those national a, parks. There's a uh, retired federal investigator, uh, and he he primarily worked in national parks. He's written like five books of missing people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he doesn't come out and say it's Bigfoot, but it's certainly where Bigfoot should be. And it's almost always single people got ahead or behind the group off the yeah. track, a single person. And... Uh, for a while, uh, the uh, Cummins north of West Branch had the Bigfoot bash. I think it started with the idea of being a skeptical thing, thing but I went and told my stories. But, but uh, that one year, there was a, a group from the uh, American Indian Midwest, and I got their book, which somebody borrowed permanently, I guess, but because <laughs> uh, I don't have any more. But, oh, but I read the book, and one of the primary foodstuffs of American Indian in the Midwest was wild rice. Okay. Well, the women and the kids would take their canoes into the wild rice when it was ripe, shake the heads into the canoes. Well, in my opinion, they were going right into the living room of Bigfoot. Exactly. Or dining room, you should say. And, yeah. <laughs> And I, and, I hate to, and I hate to tell you this, but I suspect <laughs> women and children are better eating than old oh, yeah, guys right. and old guys exactly. like that. Yeah. <laughs> more tender guys, than us. Yeah. Yeah. Tender than, right. You guys more are tender. all grisly and stuff. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So, Do you, you put I'll, that all together, you know, there's why you don't see them. Right. That's why you don't have a body. I, we didn't really do language enough justice yet. Do you have your own call that you do when you're out in the woods? I, I've done very little calling. I don't know oh, yeah. why. We usually got somebody along that loves to do it. Oh, okay. I haven't found it very uh, useful. I'm rim, I'm intrigued with this idea, just sitting and playing music and maybe giving them some food. Right. We call it gifting. Okay. Gifting. Oh, right. I think that might be more effective because well, if, for my whole thing, like if you're going from the animal perspective, if you're doing the howling and the, the knocking, yeah. a lot of that, to me, that's marking your territory. Oh, yeah. So that might right. come. Absolutely. That might come, if it's going to come, it's probably going to come could, to its if, end. And they're going to hear you to, if you play you music. Know, you could play some loud music so they know you're there, and they probably know you're there anyhow, but I'm intrigued by the idea of getting, they like blueberry bagels and peanut butter and eggs, you know, they like Yeah, you got to be careful. You could be, you know, like doing a mating call or something. Exactly. Well, <laughs> right. Or giving them the like, appetizer like, to yourself. Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Come and get it. Right. Well. Dinner bell. Call yeah. <laughs> I, I've turkey on it a little bit, and I got a nice box collar and, and a Apparently, I don't talk turkey very good because I'll do my call and then the turkeys go the other direction. Oh, now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so maybe they get on to you, you know. If you don't do the call right, they're going the other direction. Well, here's what happened with me, Phil. That's I did it. my turkey call and a coyote came. Oh, oh he, thought he, was, he thought he was <laughs> going to get a, a turkey. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So let's, let's go over this list of language. Whistle, knocks, Brandon hit on, growls, whoop howls. Mm-hmm. High pitched screams, I in a 
I heard like, like a Tarzan or like a cow on steroids myself on some of these. But the samurai chatter, yeah. that's the one that stands out in my mind. The sh Let's hear it. What's I don't the have the sh samurai chatter on my box. I do have some uh, that I can play you. I don't know if you can see our uh, brochure. The, uh, if you can see that. Uh, okay. This is for the program in April. The guy with the cowboy hat on there uh, was instrumental in recording the samurai chatter in the high Sierras in the 1970s. Wow. Yeah, he took, they went up and, and uh, this uh, Tim Berry, who's passed away now, actually recorded uh, the samurai chatter, Bigfoot talk. So they, they describe it as two Bigfoots talking to each other, like two old men grumbling at each uh, well, other. Well, maybe. Uh, but I mean, it's what they, the way they described it. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple more calls, though, I can play for sure. you. Yeah, yeah sure. do it. This one. My bird chirping in there. That's the woman that won the competition over in New York State. That's a woman that did that one. The next one is Bobo on Conan O'Brien's show, I oh, yeah. believe. That's Bobo on the Conan O'Brien. You, you were talking about how they carry that note long. They got, they got a long breath. Bobo is a pretty stocky fellow. So yeah, he's understand. a big guy, Bobo, yeah. if you've ever seen him. He's actually him. pretty thin now. He's lost. Oh, he's lost, uh, I, I think, diabetes. Here's the one that yeah. sounds like Tarzan to me. Because mm -hmm. it kind of echoes, and they're, they're doing it out in the woods. Yeah. That was Bobo. Yeah. But you look at the physiology of a male Bigfoot. If they're, in fact, 8 foot tall and weigh 800 pounds, that's almost exactly four times the average size of a human male, which is maybe 200 pounds. Yeah. And we got two liters of air. Yeah. That would give them eight liters of air in their lungs. That has to be terrifying. Uh, I suspect, well, it was for me. Yeah, right. Kentucky. Yeah, said, you, you didn't want to go you chase guys it. go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. watch the fire. That's right. I'll keep the fire going. Like Let that me know. fire's going to keep you safe. Well, <laughs> but they don't like fire. You know, you can get on the opposite side to fire. Or... If he's hungry, he's going to come get yeah. you no matter what. I think he was just mad because we were in his way. i tell you what yeah. I compare it to. When I'm at the zoo and the lion roars. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it echoes all through the zoo. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that echoing through the woods. Oh, yeah. That must just travel for miles. That Actually, the interesting part is we think that they have also what call, is called infrasound. Mm -hmm. That is a, a sound that most of your large animals have. Elephants, lions, hippopotamus. They, because of their large vocal tract, they actually can make noise way below what we can hear. Okay. Oh, no kidding. Kind of like, yeah. like dolphins, kind of. Yeah, dolphins have it, other, yeah. but the, if if you get zapped, they call it being zapped. Uh, if a bigfoot zaps you, it can knock you right down, and you can have long-term effects from what do you mean, like from zapped? sound. It's called zap, but it's a low frequency, and it affects your psyche. Like we can't hear it, like a we dog can, whistle. We can't hear it, but it really upsets you. Yeah, if you it really upsets you. In fact. I'm not so sure it's not the same thing that the Cubans have done to some of our embassy people there a couple of years ago. Mm. And, uh, you know, they I think they're playing with sounds in some of the military where they can do the low frequency and they can upset your apple cart, you might say. Right. You know, seriously. Like mentally, you're saying? Oh, yeah. Physiology, you throw up, uh, fall. The one guy I know, he's from Ann Arbor, he said his friend fell right to the ground. He just knocked him right down. And the other guy wasn't affected. Hmm. Yeah, there are people that tend to affect it differently. Like even like yeah. that, there's people around the world, like not Bigfoot, but they'll, they can hear a certain sound waves and yeah. stuff like that, and it will affect them and make them sick. Typically, whereas dog, other people right. are oblivious. Typically, to dogs can hear these sounds, and that's why they'll hear something way before we do. Right, right, right. Because right. they're hearing maybe a different uh, range of sound. I read that dogs are terrified. Oh yeah. Of Bigfoot. Typically. That's a little bit odd to me because, you know, they breed dogs to hunt bear, and them, <laughs> them dogs actually, are not afraid of bear actually, whatsoever. They treat the bear. Actually, the most dog in jeopardy is an aggressive breed that will chase them because 
Bigfoot's big enough, pick them up, throw them against the tree, and then sure. rip and then rip their legs off. Yeah. <laughs> but a, it's no but, match. But, but no, yeah. but a small dog that gets behind you, he's okay. <laughs> right. You take care of it, master. I'm I'm right here. Right. <laughs> but a big aggressive uh, German Shepherd would get torn to bits in yeah. a minute. Yeah. Be lunch. I've heard some stories. Well, about... truthfully, it's probably the small dog that's going to be more aggressive towards it because typically, typically small dogs are. They, they don't know so the better terrier, some of the yeah. breeds. I was sitting out breeds. one time there a, <laughs> with, a, with a friend, and we heard a, like a terrier bark, bark, bark. Mm -hmm. We also heard coyotes, yeah. and, and then the terrio, terrier quit barking. Yeah. I wonder what happened to him. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but coyotes, you know, you take a group of them, a small dog has no chance. Right. Yeah. You know, around cities, small animals. So. We have such a population of coyotes. Right, just, just people don't realize that there's no competition for no. The, those predators. Three or four years ago, we visited our son. He lives on the northern edge of Columbus. Two million people. It was getting dusk. Coyote ran across the road, right in the middle of town. Yeah, you know? <laughs> no, I live in town too. I live in Holland. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we live in a condo there's, association. There's places for them to hide. They'll and we have a out. pond in the back. Yeah. When it freezes over, you'll sure. see those coyotes. They'll just walk. Oh, you will. They're I'll, walking all I'll, over the, the ice. And you take around the, the boggy area, you know, they could crawl yeah. in there and hide so easy. Yep. Unfortunately, a lot of the sightings go unreported. It's kind of like seeing a UFO or a ghost. Yeah. Yep. You don't want to be the one that gets ridiculed because right. you're the one that saw it and you're crazy. Right. I know it happened I, to you too, right, Phil? I I uh, am ridiculed. People have been pretty nice to me, but I can tell with a look on their face that they think I'm nuts. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're having some fun with it, you know. <laughs> well, we voted I, I, this I, to up me to it's have just some been fun. It's a great hobby, it. you know. I just turned 77 this week and I'm doing fine. But you're looking good. Thanks. Yeah. But <laughs> most of my friends. Most of my family yep. think I'm out on the limb. Oh, yeah. You're out there. <laughs> well, you're in good company with us. I'll yeah. Tell you yeah, yeah, you guys fit right in. Oh, I guys. just love to talk We're to people. We're all weirdos about... here. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Right, right. I, I know hunters report a lot of Bigfoot sightings. I, I read this story about the guy in Texas with hunting pigs. And then the Bigfoot grabbed one of those pigs. Oh, yeah. What? I read that grabbed story. one of those pigs, and then he let out a howl. <gasps> and then he heard another howl answer him. So they were talking to each other. Like he said, I got dinner lunch. Served. Right. Well, well, the yeah. story I had was a guy got up in his tree stand. He'd been baiting the hogs. It might be a different story. That sounds, might and, be. And then yeah. it got light, and he looked, and there was a Bigfoot sitting in a tree over there. And then the hogs come in, and that Bigfoot went down the tree, snuck from tree to tree, and then it ran over, grabbed a hog, hit him on the head, whether he knocked him out or killed him, threw it over his shoulder, and then he looked back at the guy and says, I was here first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't say that. No, I, I he understand. Could, he could, he could that, tell by the look in his yeah, eye. Yeah. Like, I teach you. I'm, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I read that report, so, too, yeah, right? So, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, are sightings the most compelling evidence? What is the, the best thing that's I come forward? I personally, you know, Dr. Meldrum from Idaho has collected uh, over 300 footprint casts. I think that probably is the most compelling. But the thing in Michigan, we have so much rain. I've only uh, seen, and I got pictures of six or eight different footprints. Uh, some are pretty good. But uh, w w if you look at our line, you know, we get 25 inches of rain a year, and typically, uh, uh, in a typical week, we'll get an inch of rain. Well, you don't leave prints in the woods. You know, mm -hmm. I've looked at it time and again. Even a two track where a thousand trucks has been down, that ground is so hard you can't hardly dent it with your heel. They have to stand on the middle of the track or, or on the side, yeah. but we're talking a very smart animal here that won't do that. So, you know, you don't find many footprints. I saw the picture of the Yeti footprint where yeah. they had the pickaxe sitting next to it so you could oh, try that, to get That had two big toes? At the, yeah, it was the toes didn't really stand out too much. I thought it showed that they had two large, uh, large toes. Mm -hmm. A little di variation. I do think they vary. Uh, vary. You know, they can vary. The warmer climates are more likely to be smaller. Uh, smaller, and the cold climates they're bigger. Yeah. There's so a they got to build up the. Oh, I got to have know, a mass to survive. And, survive. Yep. Yep. So sightings go back. Centuries, they're, they're worldwide. Every culture, every continent, yep. except 
Antarctica. Yep. They don't like that cold, I guess. Who does, right? Who's down in Antarctica? It's well, like having to have the people down there to see it. Right, well, nobody there. <laughs> good point. No one to right. witness it, right? Yeah, nobody right. would know. Um, around Michigan, we've had sightings here in Grand Rapids. Kent County, Ottawa County, Muskegon, Allegan, Barrie, Ionia, Jackson County. Uh, Traverse City seems to be in the western part of the UP, uh, kind of a hot spot. But Oscoda County, is that where you're from? Oh, yeah. Uh, I go to just north of us. Okay. But the Al Sabo River runs right through there, and you know, I, I again, big rivers I think are a real good habitat. They love fish, and they can hide. And if my theory, uh, the wild man of Europe, right. you know, they could go up underneath the bank, and you'd never know they're there. Well, Sheboygan and the Black yeah. River yeah. and West Branch, the Rifle River. Rifle River. West, West Branch is where you're from. Yeah. Yep. So you got, you're right in the right place. Now, why did you do that? You gravitated there to hunt Actually, Bigfoot? I went there for my job. I worked for USDA for 26 years, and we were sort of afraid they were going to send me to the UP, and we didn't want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> we don't blame you. So an opening there at West Branch, and West Branch is sort of on the line between snow and no snow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I like snow and ice. In fact, I went ice fishing last Saturday. We had a... a over a foot of ice took my grandkids. Wow! Never caught a fish, but we did. Oh, we yeah. tried so much for that ice fishing. But, but anyhow, uh, uh, it's far enough north to enjoy the north. And uh, I'm, my wife's in Battle Creek, and I'm from Greenville, Stanton, Sheridan area. Yeah, that was interesting. But we just liked that part of the country and stayed. Yep. China, Russia, Himalayan mountain range. You talked about a Class A sighting. Mm -hmm. Is there a Class A, B, and C? I know we have a Class A, B, and C. Like EVPs. EVPs. Stuff, yeah. Now, what is a Class A sighting? I think, uh, you know, the classification the um, BFRO has done is if it's a, a, a good sighting, it would be Class A. Class B uh, would be more maybe of a, a, of a stick structure or something okay, like that. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. Or a vocalization. Yeah. yeah, half of the, see, I've documented about 120 incidents around West Branch, and about half of them are actual sightings. But I, I keep track of vocalizations, uh, structures, um, footprints, and uh, like that. You know, I think that, to me, that stuff is almost less subjective than a sighting. Because sightings, you know, it's, right? It's you know, like, uh, you know, did you see a bear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, or some guy dressed up in a bingo. suit, <laughs> which is a stupid thing to do in it Michigan with, with all you the know. guns we got. <laughs> That's a and stupid you know somebody's thing. gonna be out there like, oh, I got a chance to get a Bigfoot and be oh, famous. Oh, oh, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> right? You know? Anybody that would do that is really yeah. bonkers. Yeah, you know? even in a murder okay. case or whatever. I mean, if it's someone sees it and then someone else sees it differently those eyewitness reports can vary and be right. very inaccurate right. so like you said something like that that you have where you can get a casting yeah well, yep, especially if you're in good. a case there too where you think it is a big foot and you're seeing it, you're probably panicking and you're not i mean for the most part most people's gonna be fight or flight so most mm -hmm. people are gonna be booking it out right. of there so usually the big foot goes one way and the mm -hmm. human goes the other right. because they're both terrified of yeah. each other the big foot well this is gonna fit be right in because this is gonna be our final thought we always do a final thought but before we do that we want to do our promos because it's we are actually getting late into the hour okay so brant was brandon have anything we'll start with him uh, anything I'm, you want to just yeah just the kent county paranormal podcast um right now we're kind of Still in the middle of booking guests just because of like the producer kind of change over here. We're kind of wanted to wait to book guests so I kind of knew what was going on. So, yeah, Brandon does the Spirits Doorway, he does another paranormal podcast through WKTV mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then we have some stuff coming up. Yeah, so two weeks from tonight will be Rick Wade, seer and author. Um, so he'll be talking about his abilities, uh, psychic abilities, and so forth. Um, and then April. Um, we will be seeing again Sarah and Mary Bassett when we had them on before. I, we kind of felt like we only got the tip of the iceberg right. with those two, right? There's so much stuff. Oh, right. so and that was then a Paranormal XL for yes, just as a reminder. yeah, yeah. yeah there's and then um, two weeks after that in April, uh, Shatan Noir. Right. I think Shatan. Maybe we should just call her Shatan. You know, kind of like one word. 
like share. Yeah, like share. <laughs> I know. Right. But these are the two books yeah, that Yeah, I'm almost done Rick with Wade the second authored. one. Yeah. So we're we'll doing that like in a couple mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. We like to do different stuff, but you are the first Bigfoot guy. This oh. has been we we anticipated this has been very exciting. Now you have some stuff that you want to promo and this is why you're well, here. Yeah. yeah, we got this conference coming up in April. And uh, we got three really good speakers. Actually, the picture here is from a gal from uh, Tennessee. The grandparent had, had actually habituated a family of Bigfoot 50 years ago. And so she wrote the book, 50 Years of Bigfoot. She's coming. Uh, the second one is the Sierra Sounds. The third one, the guy is from uh, Pennsylvania, and he's documented over 250 incidents in that area. But uh, you can buy tickets online. Um, that's at West Branch, right? It's, it's at West Branch. Uh, $25 is the entrance fee. It's all day on a Saturday, April 18th. And the uh, website, uh, wbbfcom.ticketleap.com is the place to go to buy, buy tickets. But uh, we're going to have good programs. Yeah, check right? that out. I mean, it's for the that. other side of the state, but for people in that area are... Maybe even Brandon. Brandon's really I've, into I've this. I've driven all the way to Oklahoma. Pool, so my car is yeah. dead. <laughs> I've driven all the way to Oklahoma to to uh, do you know conference and stuff. Right. And, and uh, so it, you know people will drive you know and stay. And yeah. You can always what camp is, in the woods if you want. What is this free expedition? What's that? Yeah, well, we got several people signed up. Uh, we got a real active area to the east. Actually, I don't want to give you location. Right. But anybody oh. that's interested, they give give me uh, uh, their email. Yeah. Uh, usually, in conjunction, we'll come to the conference, and they can come, and we'll divide up and go out and sit and listen and look. Cool. But they provide their own food and their own camping. So, so is it an overnight thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So actually, we're gonna gonna be set up for three nights. Wow. How many expeditions have you been on already? Oh shoot! I, I've I've uh, I've probably lost count. Twenty maybe. Holy. Twenty thirty. But I've been to you know like Oklahoma, Ohio. I've been to Kentucky three times. Going again in April. Um, but I've been to a bunch of conferences too. I've been to three BFRO uh, con uh, expeditions. Expedition. But yeah, you got another one coming up and like month or two is that what uh, you said but you don't want to tell us where well this is in conjunction with our conference oh okay but there's another i thought there was another one that you were going to oh i'm also doing a program in houghton lake at okay. the houghton lake uh next week actually next thursday five to seven and that's free okay. I'm, I'm actually talking about my 10 reasons bigfoot exists oh yeah and you've done I'm, presentations oh i've quite done a few probably of them. 40 50 at yeah. least wow. but i've got it all on powerpoint so i can you know it's amazing stuff. Yeah. Do you mind if we share this website with people? Oh, fine, so fine. is this a way that they sure. can make, sure. you know, contact you for sightings yeah. and so forth? Yeah. So yeah. it's HTTPS and then all together, no spaces, write this down, Bigfoot Discovery Days, D-A-Y-S M-I dot Webly Weebly. 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 No, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. Right. So, yeah, um, check that actually, out. and actually the sightings like that will refer to my uh, YouTube account, which is simply um, Phil O News One. Phil O News One. Okay. And I got a whole bunch of, I've got the listing of, of, of the uh, incidents, but I also have put a, a, some of my interviews with witnesses there. Okay, and people can look that up on oh, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, YouTube. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Let's finish the promo off with that. Yeah. I want to say about Rick Wade. He's got this ghost hunt reading. It's going to be in Allegan Old Hospital. It's the Elks Lodge, and it's March 27th, 9 p.m. So a couple days after he's on our show, he's going to yeah. do this reading and ghost hunt. Yeah. Then we never really did a review. We kind of skipped over that from our last... Um, people we had in because we always do a review but we wanted to get into the show right away but molly and esther joy were here we talked about crystals they left me a couple gifts because they're trying to get on my good side so they are like my <laughs> i have two favorite guests now or three they left me this fossil have you ever seen one of these oh. phil it's a fossil it's 400 million years old oh, wow. yeah it's um 
cephalo Isn't cephalopod like a squid? fossil. Yeah, squid? like a squid type of a creature. Orthoceros fossil. And they left me ore that was mined right here in Michigan. Oh, that that's copper, copper ore, ore that was yeah. mined right here. It, wow. These both have... Yeah, Most all right. Yeah. And that's where a lot of them caves are from yeah. digging, right? Oh, yeah. From digging all that copper out. So... So thanks to those girls, um, it was crazy. We talked about crystals. We, they said there's a Indian Mounds Rock Mineral Show coming at Rogers Plaza, which is right down the street, April 9th through 11th. So thanks for them. Appreciate them being on the show. Um, so that's a review. We want to get into the final thought. And my final thought is you're in the woods. You're walking through the woods. Here we go. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're face-to-face -face with the Bigfoot. <laughs> So how do you respond to that? How do you act? This is what we, we do this at the end of the show. So we get everybody involved. Here you are, Brandon. You're walking down the trail. I think, I think I'd probably be frozen in awe and like, like okay, what do I do now? <laughs> That's probably where I would be at, I think. Well, if you come up to a bear, aren't you supposed to play dead? I think there's that, different. That is not, right. you don't want to actually do that. Make yourself <laughs> as big as you can with your bear. I, so I have two choices. I can either play dead. Also with the bear, you don't want to climb a tree because they can climb trees. <laughs> well, apparently Sasquatch can climb a tree yeah. too. So that's no mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And I'm assuming they're a faster runner than me. You're right. Oh, so I'm pretty much screwed no matter what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just run. <laughs> Actually, I would re recommend you stand your ground and say, hi, mm -hmm. how you doing today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'd like to think. You're right, do, I know. But, yeah. but I'm not too sure that would happen, if you'd be, particularly if you're being zapped or if they're looking mean. You know, mm -hmm. they do come in variety, and some of them can be hungry. Right. Yeah, that's one thing. That, that's kind of my criteria. If it's hungry or if it looks sick, foaming at the mouth, right. that can be very dangerous. Or if it has a little one nearby. Oh, Those yeah. three things will get you in Actually, trouble. Actually, it's in chances. Hurry. I think that the the females are much like humans. They're going to run like heck to get out of your sight. They're not going to yeah. come Or protect you. their young. The, right. one, the ones that are going to confront you are the, if in, at all, and they usually don't, is the males. I think they're very so human that they're much like, you know, 90% of the sightings are males. Mm -hmm. uh, males are wanderers. Mm -hmm. I belong to a flying club, and we got one woman, and I'm not sure she's ever gotten a plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nothing oh, yeah. against women. But, uh, you know, right. men are uh, got to be on the edge, you know. Yeah. Phil Shaw is also a pilot. Yeah, so. Right. Nice. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we talked about that a little bit. That's pretty much the show, but I want to... I want to do a shout out. We're not going to do as many as we usually do because our hour is really up. And this one is, uh, I came across this because they put our podcast on Spotify and Apple. I don't know if you knew that, Kim. No. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know that. I came across that. I came across this five-star review. What? This really warmed my heart. You're going to love this. Love so I'm going to read this. Okay. I really enjoyed this podcast. Well, first they go, um, more please. Oh, it's customer more please. More. They said I really enjoy this podcast. All the members are so very likable, which is great. I look forward to hearing about more haunting experiences and even have this podcast marked to download new episodes always. This is the first podcast I have ever bothered to write a review and rate, as I never much listened to podcasts until I heard about this one on the news. I hope I have given you all justice. Also, a side note, but still valid. It is vi really very cool to hear about GR locals instead of more New York City and LA name drops. Please it, keep it coming. So shout out to Bohemian Kimmy. What? I well, love Hini it. and Kimmy, what a great, it's a five-star review <laughs> for us. One. Thank you. So, right. Um, like I say, that's the show. I got some things coming up. I didn't get the plug, but I am going to be doing some work with Preacher Man. We have a... Oh, you are? Yes. Um, we had a demonologist. Are you doing some cl uh, cleansings? This, yes. This okay. is a very serious case. This is yeah. The demonologist, Beverly Fish, who was on the show last year, has passed this on to me. Okay. So we're going to go over to Battle Creek um, for that. When is that happening? Well, I haven't really set a date on okay. that yet. Are we going to do a show on that then after you're done? Or don't you know? Um, well, being a private case, I don't really know if I'll be able to do that. Okay. We don't right. want to get people excited. You're talking about it, but 
Well, yeah, I'm talking about it because, you know, I, I think it's important work, yep. what we're doing, because these people, they don't know what to do. They're, they're extremely distraught. You know, their whole life has been disrupted by these, these things that are, they don't know enough about to even uh, fight it. Right. I think I forgot something here on my notes. Well, and that's the whole thing, too, is like really like asking for prayers. Because I like with our team, we're having a lot of those darker cases. We've had people contacting us with, too. So right now, I'd say like a lot of prayers. I think there's going to be some battles going down. So. Yeah. Yeah, it could be in the air, right? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I think it's in the right. air right now. Well, that's yeah. where your crystals are going to come into play right there. Yeah, I'm going to use some of those. This is a quote I came across in Facebook. It says, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. Today, I whispered in the devil's ear, I am a child of God, a warrior of Christ. I am the storm. So the storm's coming to Battle Creek. But Phil Shaw, thanks for driving across Michigan and, and joining You're us, great. talking Bigfoot. Enjoy talking. What a great show. So be the storm. Peace out.